for Monday, February 26, 2024, to order. First on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. So, committee members, uh, could we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I'll make a motion we do that. A second, please. I'll second. Thank you. Ms. Donovan, could you please call roll? Uh, Ms. McBride? Yes. Mr. Ellett? Yes. Mr. Dungess? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Gothard. Yes. Approval of minutes for November 20th, 2023. We do have two of the three people that attended that meeting, so we'll need all three to approve, correct? Next on the agenda is approval of the January 22nd, 2024 meeting, and it looks like we do have enough to approve on that. Uh, Mr. Ellis, Mr. Dungies, or Dr. Baker, any comments on the minutes from that meeting? No, I don't have any. They looked fine to me. Yep. Okay. Good. With hearing no comments, could we have a motion to approve as presented? I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you. A second? A second. Thank you. Ms. Donovan, could you please call roll? Ms. McBride? Abstain. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Dungess? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Gothard? Yes. Okay. Next is a public hearing for a major modification request for case 1-2015 Anderson for 7661 and 7681 Beachmont Avenue. If staff could please provide their uh, summary. Thank you. The applicant is Russell Myers of JLL on behalf of Mayfield Brain and Spine on behalf of PCOA Associates LLC who is the property owner. The location is at 7661 and 7681 Beachmont Avenue, and the zoning is OO, which is planned office. The request is to modify condition number nine of the original resolution in 20, um, 2015, where all signage shall not exceed two 60 square foot signs on the north facade. And the request is to install an additional 40.2 square feet of wall signage. So again, the zoning history, the um, zone change was from E retail C residence and DD plan multifamily to OO planned office. This was case one 2015 and it was approved by the trustees in August of that same year. And the approval contained two conditions that were related to signage. Number one was that the wall signs did not exceed two 60 square foot wall signs on the north facade only. So a total of 120 square feet of wall signage. And then number 10, there should be no freestanding signage allowed on the site. That was primarily because there was no frontage for a, uh, a freestanding sign. Their uh, frontage was uh, included the access drive to McDonald's and First Financial and the cross access. So there was no room for a freestanding sign. Um, the final development plan was approved in September and then a zoning certificate was issued in November 2015. Uh, also as part of the zoning history, currently there are two temporary banners on the front of the building and at least one of those is in violation of the township's zoning resolution. So this is the site in question, Beachmont Avenue to the north of the slide. Um, and then again, their building is set back from the Beachmont Avenue. This is the aerial, this is First Financial up here at the top, McDonald's, the access drive that is shared between McDonald's and the surrounding properties. There is a cross access drive um, behind the, the shopping center that has first watch um, in it, and then the office building toward the rear of the property. Um, this is a zoning map. The red is a retail commercial zoning district. The OO is the blue. The orange is a multifamily, which is the Asbury Senior Apartments. And then the yellow is um, B, single family, which includes the Anderson High School, as well as some single family homes off of Asbury to the south. Again, this is a site plan and that what, what was approved, Beachmont Avenue, Wolf Angle, this is at the signal. And again, the building sits back off of the roadway. This is the proposed wall signage that would be mounted in the center of the building. Again, the north facade that faces Beachmont Avenue, 40.2 square feet. This is the elevation drawing. Um, there are two existing signs, the Cincinnati GI and the uh, Ritter Financial Advisory. This is the illegal um, sign or the non-compliant sign. And then there's also, which you'll see in one of our other pictures, a for lease sign up in this general area. 
the Mayfield sign is proposed to go in between the two existing wall signs. So this is the front uh, picture of the front taken from the parking lot. Again, the existing two signs. This would be the approximate location, temporary sign and temporary sign. Just different vantage points. This is the facade that faces the Asbury Senior Apartments. So at the, at the meeting when the building was approved or when the zone change was approved, it was discussed that no signage be permitted on any other facade because, again, this was facing a residential apartment community. The rear is facing single family zoning district, same way on the uh, west facade, also facing single family zoning district, although it's Anderson High School. And this is the distance from Beachmont to the front of the building, just to give you an idea of the visibility and one of the reasons for the request for an, an additional 40 square feet. McDonald's is to the left, First Financial to the right. First Financial does have a freestanding sign here, and then McDonald's, of course, has just one. They used to have multiple, <laughs> so they just have one now. A very large one. So the findings, uh, this is considered a major modification because it is requesting a change of an existing condition. Um, so we look at the approving resolution. Again, the maximum square footage was 120 square feet of wall signs and the request is for an additional 40 square feet. Um, in the OO planned office zoning district, the uh, zoning resolution does allow 40 square feet per mm -hmm. facade. So we did uh, a, a calculation, and if you were to include all four facades, the total would be 160, which is what they are requesting, but all the signage is requested to be on one facade versus all four facades. Um, looking at the applicable plans, the trails plan is not really applicable. It was um, evaluated when the zone change went into effect. We did identify areas within the Beachmont plan. This is in neighborhood three. Um, the Anderson plan, we did look at the chapters of economic vitality, land use and development, and did feel like this request was somewhat consistent with these chapters. And then finally, looking at the design guidelines, and these are the recommendations from the design guidelines regarding building mounted signage. So staff's recommendation was approval um, based off of the following reasons. Number one, that if you did use the calculation of all four wall signs, you do come up with 160 square feet, which is what is being requested. It is on one facade versus all four facades. Um, we do feel like it is compatible with the surrounding site and condition, uh, the surrounding site with the site and surrounding uses, including the commercial uses up on Beachmont Avenue in front of them, such as McDonald's the Festival Market Shopping Center and First Financial, uh, which are all zoned retail. They are in a different zoning district. However, this building does sit behind those um, and doesn't have the benefit of being up close to the street. Um, number three is consistent with the design guidelines. The signage seemed to be compatible with the architectural style and the features of the building. The building, as you saw, has a mixture of building materials. Um, and number four, um, Again, the building is set back um, and somewhat is at a, a disadvantage for visibility. So we do feel like uh, it is appropriate to have additional wall signage. If the board does consider approval, we do recommend a condition that the temporary signage be brought into compliance with the zoning resolution. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Ms. Roberts, well, or Baker, sorry. Dr. Baker, do you have any questions of staff? Um, yeah, I wanted to understand, um, first of all, there, I drove out there this weekend and there is a small freestanding sign um, in right in front that like says go this way for Mayfield and it has a number of other businesses. And it got me to wondering what percentage of the building is Mayfield taking up that, that I don't know that would be a question for the applicant um, I'm not sure what how much a percentage they are and that sign you are referring to we did permit that as a directional sign versus a freestanding sign well and it just got me to thinking mm -hmm. of, do, doesn't anybody else 
have equal standing then, depending on how much of the building they're taking up to make a similar request? Is Are we granting Mayfield just because they got here first? Yeah. And I, so I do want to know okay. what the percentage is. Mr. Dungey, is there any questions of staff? Um, I was just curious if we know how long the non compliant temporary sign's been up and if uh, the property owner or applicant has been notified previously. There were some emails back and forth probably maybe a year ago or a little less than a year ago. Um, I don't know if it was the owner. I believe it was the um, broker that was made aware of that. That's all. Okay. Mr. Elf? Yes, I've got a question for Paul. Um, is this the same zoning district as the Tri Health building on the corner of Beachmont and Five Mile that we discussed yes. last year? Yes, it's a planned office zoning district, correct. Do you know, I, I believe I know the answer to this question, but I'm not sure. Do each one of these indicated businesses on here have their own separate entrance? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware that they do, but that would be a app question for the applicant. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Ms. McBride, any questions? I don't have there? any questions, but my internist is in this building, <laughs> and I can tell you they don't have exterior entrances. I thought you'd just go in the main <laughs> door there, I, but there was an entrance in the back for one of the, it might be an exit only, I'm not sure. It's an exit only That's when the exit only. Okay. somebody comes to take you home after That's you have. That's what it is, yeah, yes. Right, okay. that, yes. Seeing no other questions of staff, if the applicant would like to come up and present the case, please state your name, address, and affiliation to the case. Good evening. I'm Rusty Myers with JLL. Home address is 11998 Bright Silks Lane, Cincinnati 45249. And I'm here representing Mayfield Brain and Spine tonight. So um, first off, I want to thank Mr. Drury and Ms. Donovan for their help through this process. and. The entire township uh, Mayfield's thrilled to be here uh, thrilled to be part of the community um, the real issue and, and reason we're here requesting the signage is just for identification and wayfinding we found that the patients are having a little bit of trouble finding the building and even once they're coming down the entry drive knowing that Mayfield is in the building um, I think everybody's aware the building set back pretty far from Beachmont Avenue and we have both McDonald's and First Financial Bank kind of blocking visibility. So, um, you know, Mayfield, just by nature of what they do, brain and spine, um, want to make it as easy as uh, they can for their patients to find them and know where the entrance of the building is and, and where to go. Um, so, I think Mr. Drury did a really nice job kind of outlining um, the reason for the request and um, hopefully the compliance uh, with the zoning when we look at the entire kind of allowable signage for the building the only facade that's visible is obviously the facade facing what would be could be west I guess um, coming in the driveway so um, again I think from the sign itself very compatible with the design of the building same type of materials uh, Tony Mayer's here in case there are any questions on the sign uh, itself and, and the design of the sign. But um, we really appreciate your consideration of this tonight. And any questions you might have of us, happy to answer. All right, thank you. Dr. Baker, we'll start with you. Yeah, what percentage of the building is Mayfield? I can't tell you exactly. I think we're about 20% uh, of the building. Okay, are you number three after Cincinnati GI and Ritter? Probably. I, I don't know the direct answer to that, but I think that's correct. Um, I also wondered, because there is uh, the signage out front that clearly says Mayfield. I understand people have to drive back there to see it. But I did note that on the uh, glass doors, it doesn't say explicitly which entrance to go in for Mayfield. And, I wondered, you know, That's, that would be very clarifying for people. Yeah, and again, I think a big piece of it, when people are coming down the driveway, 
and seeing a sign on the building with Mayfield there, they know where to go. Um, and it's really not a question of other wayfinding. So that's the big reason we'd like to have the sign on the building. Any other questions they have, then, Dr. Baker? It, it might be a better question for you. What additional, do you have a list of the other build businesses that are there? I do not. No. Um, I should have written it down. I didn't. No, I, I don't. When they, uh, a new business goes in there, um, we may get a, a zoning stamp off for an interior renovation, but as long as it's a, we don't track the percentage. Sir, do you know approximately how occupied the building is? Is it 90%, 80%, Yeah, I think there's, it's about 90% occupied. I think there are only about 4,000 square feet left to lease in the building. Any other questions, Dr. Baker? Okay, Mr. Dungeys, question uh, to that. Will the temporary sign be either removed or brought into compliance? I would ask the township to pursue that I think again um, I don't represent the building owner and I don't represent uh, Cincinnati GI who has that sign on the building okay. Got it. I just represent Mayfield but I would think if the township requests that to be taken off that's the appropriate next step okay Mr. Elif uh, yes I've got one where is the Mayfield entrance on that building i uh, see three doors there and then i i'm i've been in that building but uh, or at least up close to it but i uh, yeah it's actually under the canopy you see if you see that double door entry there yes under you, the ritter financial correct you under enter that into is that where door. you go in correct that's where the elevators are yeah okay that's all i've got thank you mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, Ms. McBride. I got nothing for a change. <laughs> Mark this in the calendar. No. <laughs> I have no questions. I snuck okay, mine in you. earlier. So thank uh, you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. If anyone else would like to speak, well, I guess I do have one question. Um, sure. You know, it looks like the sign is individual letters, Mayfield, all and internally illuminated. Correct. Okay. Is there going to be like a continuous channel behind it, or is it truly individual letters? I uh, see you. Tony? I'm Tony Mayer. <laughs> okay. Again, if you could state your name and address and uh, affiliation. Anthony, so. Anthony Mayer, uh, 7 Sentinel Estates, Wilder, Kentucky. Uh, no, there is not a raceway behind it. It'll be flush mount. The power supplies will be inside. I can also tell you that Mayfield is pretty stringent on not being, I'm going to say, obnoxiously illuminated, so it'll be on a timer where it'll kick on, let's say, hypothetically, uh, like six in the morning, it'll kick off at eight in the morning, and then it'll turn on about six o'clock at night and turn off by 10 o'clock at night. So we put it on what we call a sun tracker. Okay. So it won't be on regular, but during winter times, they do have early appointments. I know I've taken my wife to the one in Hyde Park, so, you know, and actually my tooth doctor is in that building in the back entrance, <laughs> so that helps too, so. Other than that, it's LED compliant. Uh, it's, you know, it's okay. your normal, I would say, channel letter fabrication. Great. The only thing that is disputing on the drawing, I will tell you this, the returns of the letters show black. They'll probably be blue, the same as the trim cap on the letters. I also assume you're not going to use a Tapcom masonry anchor into the metal No, panel. not into a metal <laughs> foundation. Actually, when we submit for the permit, it'll be engineered. All right. Okay. So they'll probably come back with a toggle or a wood anchor, or a zip, zip uh, anchor. Okay. So. All right. Thank you very much. And could you, you well approved. Yes. Could you repeat your address? Uh, 7 Sentinel Estates, Wilder, Kentucky. 41074, if that helps, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Um, any other questions from commission? Okay. Hearing none, if anyone else would like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none from our large audience, if someone would like to speak opposed to the application, please come forward. Someone's just happy to be here. I think so. 
All right. Uh, with that, uh, we'll open discussion amongst the commission. So, Ms. McBride, we'll start with you. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. The, you know, the building sits way far back, and and not only that, when you come in there, then they're the guys that are trying to juggle to go into the drive-through line for McDonald's, and then they're the guys going into the bank, and and then there's the access road that cuts behind the strip center that gets to the Christ Hospital thing, and and so forth and so on. Um, you know, Mayfield, it's their brain and spine division. Um, these are probably not people, even like the GI guys who go every five or ten years. <clears throat> um, no, you know, it's a routine visit. You hope it's not a routine visit, but whatever. At any rate, um, and they're just basically using up square footage that they would be entitled to anyway. So I don't have any problem with that at all. <laughs> Mr. Ella. I think the main factor for me was, and I'm in favor of it, but... Uh, with a caveat, which is the main factor for me on it was that the building owner was in favor of it, one, and two, the staff recommendation in favor of it is what turned it for me. I, I will comment, and I've seen other buildings like this, where you have a, a, a really cool building and it gets overwhelmed with signage, and um, that's kind of my opinion on this one with all these uh, banner signs across the top of it I think it is detracting from the building and I also would add I don't think that the Mayfield um, sign in that location is assisting uh, I agree it assists them when you come off of Beachmont but it's really uh, yeah I drive up to that and like hmm build it, you know door one two or three so um, I uh, but, but with that being said um, I feel like Yes, if the building owner is in favor of it, obviously uh, Mayfield is a marquee tenant that they probably want to highlight. So I would be in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elliff. Mr. Dungey. Uh, I concur. I don't have anything else to add. Thank you. Dr. Baker? Yeah, I'm inclined to be opposed on the basis that I really didn't feel like the question about the tenants and, and who has the most space there was adequately answered the fact that I think wayfinding um, might be uh, adequately served by having bigger for example um, address numbers and the doors are not clearly marked about who's at what place um, I don't think it's I think it does junk up the building and I think that being set so far off Beachmont, I don't know how much it helps anyway, and I'm not sure it's fair to the other tenants. And um, my deference to the building old owner only goes so far as his or her willingness to take down the illegal banner, which they have not been willing to do. Thank so that's my inclination okay. at this time. Thank you very much. You know, I mean, my thoughts are, yes, there's a lot of signage for this building uh, on one facade, but that's truly the only facade that has sort of public presence to it. Um, and because it's set back so far from the street, it sort of diminishes that sort of public aspect of it. Um, you know, going back, I guess I, when I drove back, you know, I'm more inclined to go to the double doors because it is undercover. So, you know, it sort of is, this is the entrance and a lot of multi-tenant spaces. Multi-tenant spaces have that main entrance sort of under the canopy. Um, so aesthetically, if it was my building, I would be not in favor of it, I guess. But, you know, looking at where we are, knowing that the 160 square feet total with this signage would in essence max out if they were looking at all four signage and any future tenants that come in would have to come back to the commission. And unfortunately the building owner would have to say, you have no signage allowance, so the township has to approve it. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, if anyone else has any thoughts, we can add. Seeing None. If someone would like to make a motion, please. I would make a motion that we recommend uh, approval of case 1-2015 Anderson Major Modification for the Medical Office Building at 7661 and 7681 Beachmont Avenue based on staff's findings 
um, compliance with the applicable plans um, and I would include uh, the condition that all the temporary signage on the property be brought into compliance with the uh, zoning resolution. Great, thank you. A second, please. Second. Thank you, Mr. Elliff. Ms. Donovan, if you could please call the roll. Ms. McBride? Yes. Mr. Elliff? Yes. Mr. Dungess? Yes. Dr. Baker? No. Mr. Gothard? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, last uh, item on the agenda is of election of officers. Uh, so we have three here that are permanent and two that are uh, substitutes. So thank you, substitutes, but please weigh in based on your experiences with our commission. Um, please keep in, in mind that we have two people that are not here, um, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Henson. Mr. Henson is the previous chair. And as I emailed Ms. Donovan, if you're not there, you may be chair. Uh, so keep them in mind. Uh, as far as who may be a good chair and vice chair. I think that uh, Mr. Gothard would be a great uh, chair. Uh, Mr. Gothard's done chair a lot. <laughs> that's why he's so good at it, right? And that's why it might be good to have a, someone else be Mr. Chair. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. Does he have any objection? Well, does Mr. He Lewis object? Let us hear it now. What's that? I don't hear Jay saying anything. All right. Should okay. we nominate uh, Mr. Lewis then for a chair? I, I would. I would second that nomination. So, Mr. Yes. Mr. Lewis to be chair. We were I was looking at the terms of who Mr. Lewis where this we up right in line. Um, I don't know if that matters to you all. Well, we what get the same letter at? every year saying, okay. do you want, I mean, how do you even know when your term is up? I don't know. <laughs> I, again, well, I don't know if it matters. Or or it, I don't know. I think it's more for you. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> what is Mr. Lewis's term? So, Mr. This was from 2023. This has not been up to No, it has it been. It's over here. Um, no, it just, hasn't. It's still. So, Jonathan, you were just reappointed um, for a five year term. And so, uh, it looks like Brian, this is your. Yes, so this is Brian's last, his fifth year of five years. Um, and then it goes Ben after that. So when, that's kind of the order. Brian? Yours is 2027. So it would, it would go, um, yeah, Brian is in his fifth term. Ben it will be in his fourth term. And then Jay is am I in the right order? Yeah. Jay will be in his third term. And then Ann and then uh Jonathan. This doesn't so that's his ending term. I know we have to go by this. Yeah. Why do we get that? So this doesn't make any sense. Are you do you need a vote on that? I think the motion and second it. stands. So okay, do I need to do roll? Sure. Okay, Miss McBride. Yes. Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. Dungess. Yes. Dr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Gothard. Oh yes. <laughs> and then, but wait, there's more. Then I would like to nominate Mr. Gothard for vice chair, since he's feeling so inclined. I would accept that one. So. I'll second. Ms. Donovan, could you please call roll? Uh, Ms. McBride? Yes. Mr. Elliff? Yes. Mr. Dungess? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Gothard? Yes. So any new business on the horizon for next month? Maybe. There's, there's still a couple out there pending, but wait. I don't know. They've been pending for a while, so. Um, Can you tell us what's pending? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has yeah. been publicly submitted as pending yet, <laughs> so, um, so right. Okay. So we'll let you know. The deadline you said was is Monday, so we'll let you know 
after on Tuesday if, if there'll be a meeting or not. All right. With that, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, anyone opposed? Okay, everyone's in favor, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.